Some of you guys may remember when I did my teamwork rankings video of all the classes. However, we've gotten four brand new classes since that video, and that was eight months ago. So, I'm going to be redoing that tier list today. Let's get started. First off, you'll notice that there's a depends on campaign slot in my tier list. That is for investigator. 100% that is for investigator. The thing about investigator is, if you're in a campaign that relies heavily on information gathering, investigator is S tier. 100%. Investigator is the best information gatherer in the system. And information gathering can be incredible for teamwork. However, that's all the investigator can do. Seriously. So if you're not in that type of campaign, it's more like B. Yeah, really does depend on the campaign. Alright, now we'll go in alphabetical order. First up is Alchemist. Alchemist goes in S tier. Definitely. So much versatility under Alchemist that it's hard not to put it in S. You can do just about anything with an Alchemist. Want to debuff? Go with Bomber or Toxicologist. Want to heal? Go with Trojan. Want to buff allies and kind of be a melee attacker? Go with Mutagenist. Alchemist, definitely S tier. Alright, Barbarian. I'm going to put Barbarian in B. Barbarians do two things very well for teamwork. One is grappling, best grappler in the game, and the other is knocking down or tripping. However, that's it. That's all they get. That's why they're in B. But, those are very effective. That's why it's not lower. But Barbarian is a class built around damage. That's all there is to it. So, B tier. Okay, moving on to Bard. Bard, come on. Of course it's going in S. Bard in any system goes in S. But, especially in this system, great subclasses, great feats, and they even get the best teamwork spell list in the entire game. Oh yeah, Bard S. I'm putting Champion in A. 100%. I'd like to put Champion in S tier, but the evil champions are what's holding it back. With the exception of the Tyrant. Um, but especially Anti-Paladin. My god, Anti-Paladin is not good at all. <laughs> but the good champions are S tier. 100%. And Tyrant. The other champions are more like B tier. At best. So, that's why Champion goes in A. Alright, Cleric is next, and Cleric, I think Cleric is a B tier class when it comes to teamwork. Second best teamwork spell list in the game, and best healer in the game, period. There, there, there's no one better. Extra spell slots just for healing, that alone. I do think it's B because of the sub we, we don't have enough subclasses for it. And the other thing is, the War Priest isn't near as good as the Cloistered. Now, Cloistered is much better, uh, even, though, even though they don't get armor, but they get other stuff that more than makes up for it. Uh, so yeah, Cleric B. Like, I'd say Cleric is a tiny bit better than Barbarian. For teamwork, Druid goes in C. Unfortunately... Druids just don't have enough teamwork class feet. At least not as of yet. However, subclasses, with the exception of Storm, are very good for team. The Animal Companion can help with tripling, grappling, that sort of thing. Uh, the Wild Druid forms can do the same thing. And, you know, it's always good to have big thing that enemies want to attack rather than weak spellcaster. Also, the Primal List got a huge teamwork buff in Secrets of Magic. Oh yeah, now Primal Casters have a ton of really cool teamwork-based spells that are specific to them. If you want to check that out, you can check out the video in the card. Now for the one that everybody wants to take for damage, the Fighter. And actually, Fighter goes in A. Yeah, I hate to say it, but Fighter definitely goes in A. The main reason 
because they're better than Barbarian because they have a ton of feats that help with just about everything you can do with athletics. Oh, it's great. Disarming, although disarming isn't that great. Um, tripping, shoving, uh, grappling. They've got feats for all that. The only thing that's keeping them from uh, S tier is that they are still a class that's based on damage. But Fighter is still an excellent class for teamwork if you build it correctly. And now we come to the Gunslinger class. One of the brand new classes we got in Guns and Gears. S tier. Oh yes, top of S tier. If you want to build a teamwork character with the best class, go with Gunslinger. I literally just built a teamwork build using one of the using one of the ways that everybody thinks of as damage accuracy. And I built it towards teamwork very easily. If I can do that, imagine what I can do with the, the ways that are actually built toward teamwork. Alchemist is very close, but Gunslinger is just a tiny bit better for teamwork. And then of course, we've got the other new class we've got in Guns and Gears, the Inventor. Inventor goes in A. Goes in between Fighter and Champion in A. Uh, the reason is the versatility. Um, I still think Champion is better than Armor Inventor when it comes to tankiness, but you gotta factor in that Inventor also has the Weapon Inventor, which is very good for teamwork. Uh, not as good as Fighter, but they definitely have some of the same options as Fighter does. And then we've got the Construct Companion, which is always great to have a, a companion that you can just repair when it gets damaged. You don't have to spend resources other than time healing. Inventor, middle of A. Okay, time to talk about Magus. Magus goes bottom of B. Yeah. Unfortunately, while the hybrid studies are amazing, and I love all of them, especially for teamwork, there's just too much holding Magus back for me to put it any higher. The bounded spellcasting hurts it a lot. I get why they did it, but it still hurts it a lot. Um, then you've got the um, spell strike, which only works with spells with attack rolls, uh, and not a whole lot of teamwork spells require attack rolls, sadly. Uh, and then you have the fact that they have almost no teamwork class feats. More than Druid, but not much more than Druid. There's a lot holding Megas back, and that's why I can't put it any higher than low B. For Monk, Monk goes in A, above Fighter. Uh, not much above Fighter, but above Fighter. And the, and the main reason why it's above Fighter is it can do everything a Fighter can, uh, but it also has the free hand uh, ability. Yeah, it's always going to have a free hand, unless you want to do some weird build where you're dual wielding Monk weapons. I don't know why you would do that. Because the free hand thing makes it, makes it a little bit better than fighter when it comes to teamwork. But again, what's holding it back is from, from S tier is that it doesn't have enough teamwork class feet. Then we have what was my favorite class in Pathfinder 1st Edition, the Oracle. Oracle goes in B just below Cleric. Again, second best teamwork spell list in the game, but the curse does hold it back a little bit, uh, and it's not as good as healing as the Cleric is. But it's got a ton of really cool teamwork feats. I do think that it's not as good at teamwork as Cleric is, especially Cloister Cleric, uh, because the curse is holding it back just a tiny bit. If Oracle didn't have the curse and had something different, then it would be above Cleric. But I'm afraid as it stands right now, Oracle is just a tiny bit behind Cleric. All right, it's time to talk about Ranger. Ranger, for me at least, for teamwork, goes in top of B. If we're talking just Outwit Ranger, then it definitely goes in A, above champion but we're not talking about just outwit 
talking about the ranger as a whole. And sadly, the other two Hunter's Edges do hold it back. If you're picking anything but Outwit, so Precision or Flurry, you're going to build toward damage. That's all there is to it. And damage is important, sure, but it's not everything. That's to it. Personally, I think Flurry and Precision are both boring. Outwit, on the other hand, would be a really fun ranger to build. For me, at least. Yeah, if I'm playing a ranger, I'm playing Outwit. Outwit rangers can be about knowledge, they can be about traps, and they can even be about both at the same time if you've got a free archetype. I know because I've done it. Anyway, moving on. And now we come to my favorite class in Pathfinder 2e, the Rogue. As much as I want to put Rogue in S tier, I feel like it's actually top of A tier. For teamwork, anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's very close to S tier. But what's holding it back from S tier is it doesn't really become a teamwork class until level 9, when it gets debilitating strike. Don't get me wrong, they have plenty of teamwork feats, rogue records are all good for teamwork, and the building strike is beyond good for teamwork. And let's not forget about the skill feats. Every skill feat in the game is good for teamwork in some way, and rogues get one every single level. That's already ridiculous. But, there you go. Rogue is an A. Time for Sorcerer. Sorcerer gets bottom of B. Everybody forgets about the blood magic. But, those effects are really good. Yeah, sure, they only last for one round. But, you know what? Getting a plus one to AC, say, from the Draconic Bloodline, is always pretty good. Even if it's just for a round. And, they have access to every spell list. Which is fantastic. At the same time, though, that also means that it heavily relies on bloodline. As to whether this is A tier, S tier, or whatever. That's why, overall, it's in B. Moving on to Summoner. Summoner goes in C. Honestly, the only thing that's keeping Summoner away from D tier is that it does have access to every spell list. But it relies too much on the Eidolon, plus you have to worry about the, um, the whole split HP thing. As much as I loved playing Summoner when Secrets of Magic came out, yeah, gotta put it in C. You can build a Summoner tour teamwork, I know because I've done it, I did a video on it, but sadly, other classes have better teamwork feats. Than the summoner does. And the summon abilities right now just aren't good for team. I can't put it any higher than C. For Swashbuckler, Swashbuckler goes in S tier. The main reason for Swashbuckler being in S tier is because tons of teamwork feats, class feats, I should say, tons of teamwork class feats, plus all, almost all the styles help for teamwork in some way. Almost all of them. Not all of them, but most of them. Yeah, in fact, uh, Watch Buckler probably goes somewhere like here. No, more like there. It doesn't, it doesn't have as much versatility as an alchemist or a gunslinger, but it is up there. So for which, which is tough. Familiar abilities are excellent for teamwork, especially since which gets so many of them. They have great teamwork feats and access to every spell list. Um, I feel like top of A, bottom of S. I'm going to put them in bottom of S tier. I don't think they have as much versatility as other classes in S tier. That's why they're, why they're bottom of S tier. And they definitely don't have as much versatility as an alchemist. No way. <laughs> I don't think they can come up with a class that has as much versatility as an alchemist. 
but the lessons and what the patrons give you, top notch. Yeah, bottom of S tier is where I'm putting it. I feel like you could also put it in, in, in top of A tier as well and be fine. All right, time for wizard. I feel like a lot of people are going to be mad at this, but I have to put wizard in D. Yep, afraid so. Don't get me wrong. The Arcane list is a good teamwork spell list. However, it has been surpassed by the Primal list. Mainly because of the Secrets of Magic. And Wizard, the problem with Wizard for me is that all of its feats go off as spells. Whatever spells are in your book, that's what all your feats are going to go off of. So, it really depends on what spells you put in your book. Don't get me wrong, the Arcane list definitely has some good teamwork feats. Things like Fear and Slow and Haste are, are great. But, if you pick a bunch of, if you pick a bunch of damaging, damaging spells, you're not going to get much out of Wizard for teamwork. On the other hand, if you pick spells that are good for teamwork, then, then Wizard can be great. Then again, since it depends so much on your spells, I'll put it in B tier. I thought I, I, I thought for sure I was going to put Wizard in D, but I feel like it does rely on its spells. Eh, no, it relies on its spells too much. That's the problem with Wizards. I mean, at least with Summoner, there are some good teamwork spell teamwork feats that don't rely on your spell list. That's why it's higher. But yeah, whatever is in your book for Wizard, that determines whether or not Wizard is good for team, and that's why it's in D. And remember, guys, all this is strictly my opinion. If you have a different opinion, go ahead and sound off in the comments below. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Pathfinder 2nd Edition teamwork content. You can also check out my Patreon page for exclusive perks. And until next time, remember, teamwork is vital.